Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. And also, I mean, I don't, I don't actually need to be doing this. We've done most of what we need to be doing. I just kind of need to figure out what crop rotation I'm going to want to do. At least in some of it. So, we'll want a bit of... We're going to need digestate. We need pallets because I'd like to do the greenhouses. With the, there's uh, three different crops that we can get from the greenhouses. I'd like to be able to do all of those so that we've got um, the the red lettuce and we've got the two different types of melons being produced as well. So we can grow watermelons and standard melons here. I don't know what the standard ones. Probably sundew, uh, uh, honeydew, honeydew melons. Um, so we'll go with producing those, which means that we're going to need the different products and I, I think it's compost pallets that sort of stuff uh, we're also going to want to produce our own fertilizer here we're going to want to I'm not so was worried about the seed so we don't need slurry that's the only thing that we're not going to need because I don't I'm not worried about seed we, we can buy seed in um, and we're also going to want the the protein food for the animals but we can do that later. At the moment, we can just buy it from the shop. So again, we don't need to worry about that one. We've got enough grain here at the moment to be able to feed the chickens-ish, I think. And then once we've done some feeding of the chickens, we can um, like we can either buy in a bit more or we can try and do something a little bit different. I'm not quite sure what we'll do yet. Right, I, I, I'm I'm. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to do twice around this field, but we'll see if the hired help can cope with just doing once around the field, and then I'll, um, I can, like, tidy, as long as he can turn round, we can do the tidying up afterwards. I'm quite happy to do that. It's a very sharp turn there. I like the fact that the plough is actually ploughing everything, despite the fact that I'm turning quite sharp. It's still catching everything, with, um, between the front and back plough. That's one of the thing that always irritates me with mowing is if you use a set of mowers, you always miss little bits whenever you're turning it. I really hate that. That really does bug me so much. It really does. It's painful. I'm struggling with this. I mean, it is a steep hill, admittedly, and we have got a lot of furrows on this plough. There is there is a, there is a lot of work that this tractor is actually doing right now, so I, I think credit where it's due that this is fairly impressive what we're doing. So we turn here and then I get that kind of lined up straight-ish. Let's bring it back up that way a little tiny bit. There and now I'll go with the hired help. Okay, hired help now is front and rear mounted plow i'm curious if yeah okay it didn't even pause to do that which is really really cool the way it did that um this bit is a bit more of a struggle apparently that's all right i do think that twice around the field would probably have made a huge difference to how we do things both plows turning over now this is awesome And how accurate is it going to be? Like, yeah, we're, we're dropping down a, a huge amount. And it's kind of like all over the place right there. But, oh, that is awesome. That is absolutely fantastic. Look at that beautiful setup. That is amazing. To be honest, it was worth all of the map change and everything just to be able to have this. We've got front and rear mounted plows working on our tractor in our fields that just looks fantastic and yeah it's going to take a little bit of work for me to go back and tidy up afterwards and probably admittedly this field would have been best just left as grass because of the shape of it it's going to be a bit difficult for um doing other stuff with but it did need plowing um and so we could I may change my mind yet and just plant it all back oh actually I'll tell you what we could do 
that we haven't done in a really long time. We could plan. We could do this field as um, poplar. We, we could plant poplar in here. Just do a single crop of that. We've also got lentils, the almonds and pistachios. Uh, lentils and chickpeas we could do. Chickpeas have got a very small window there, but... Um, and lentils are the same. So we could do those in here. I don't really know. I'm not, not quite sure. But the poplar... We can. That's still got a planting window at the moment. So we could do that. We we could plant this field here with poplar, and then we could go along and, and harvest it later. Because I got a, there's a couple of different harvesters that we can use for that. Um, yes, it does take a little bit of time, but there's various headers, and I can get a header on here that goes a bit faster. I think uh, I I'd be quite happy to go and do that. I also do have crop destruction turned off for um, this particular series. Um, I know some of you do really like the crop destruction, but I also know that just as many of you feel about it the same way that I do. It's just not realistic enough. Um, the amount of crop loss that you get from driving on the crop is slightly ridiculous. So, yeah, I feel that maybe we don't need to worry about that too much. Um, anyway, that one's going to carry on there and do that, and... This one's battery is now flat because the beacons have been flashing non-stop since we finished up the fields. We've got another 8,000 litres of oats in here that we're going to want to do something with. I'm quite liking the idea of maybe... Uh, well, I, I'm sort of thinking that maybe we should get several production facilities going so that we can make, like, biscuits and, and things like that and um, rather than just selling everything. Uh, kind of, well, we did kind of do that a little bit in the last series. We, we, had the, we, we at least had the mill. This time, though, we got 1.1 million in the bank, and I'm not just going to go and spend that whole lot. I'm, I'm thinking very carefully about what we should do with that because, yes, we're going to want more fields and... Uh, we're going to want to get extra machinery and stuff here. But, I mean, if, like, we need sugar beet for one of the things that we want to produce, if we're going to go and set up for sugar beet, we need harvesters and everything. Those cost a lot of money. Like, they really do cost a huge amount of money. So we've got that to sort of take into consideration. Now, we can fold this one up. I'll fold up the combine in a second. We will put this back on the header track you know what rather than trying to mess around here in the gateway and and because this is you know just just going to be tricky to do if i swing this one around here like this i can hook that trailer on there and drive it off into the field and we got plenty of room to maneuver and and put stuff on and also if we have a look at the map a second uh, you will now see that that one's got fertile little bits on the end that don't have the fertilizer, but other than that, everything is tickety boo. Uh, you have reached the end. Oh, I'm just going to stop that one for a minute. And we are going to go with uh, Control B. Oh, apparently control B doesn't do anything. So I'll turn that one over as well. And I'll go back to here and basically start this one from this point here, close to that, and then uh, we, we can do the tidy up afterwards. Because if we've got this massive great big electricity pole in the way, it's going to cause us problems. So if I just go with hired help right there. Are you facing the right way? Yes, he is. That's fine. Well, ish, actually. That is that's that is a bit of an ish. Like, uh, I think I need to actually just bring that one up a little tiny bit. Go to there. Right. And you drop down as well. That's better, because... Uh, bit further along it sort of pops out a little bit and he should then be able to go past that electric pole without any pole, telegraph pole I think it is I'm not sure could be either it's a pole let's just leave it at that and then you 
That one can go there, and now I can take this header off, and we can put the combine away. I need to set up somewhere on the farm a workshop, because I don't want to be using uh, just, just the sort of approach the side of the machine type approach. I don't feel that that is a particularly good way of doing this. Let's drop you off there, and then you should snap. Are you not going to snap into place? Apparently that is not going to snap into place. I really wish it wouldn't do that. Right, most of them, they do snap into place. But not all of them. I mean, it still locks onto the header trailer, but it doesn't actually snap it in place there. And it, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me that it doesn't do that. Now, uh, what's the best way to go? I'm going to... Yeah, we, we need to use the road. Using the road is something we're going to have to do fairly frequently here, but let's just leave you... Uh, uh, ooh, actually, uh, I want to go... No, I, I don't want to do that. I leave you there a second. I'm not going to worry about you. It's you right here. Uh, what is the current price of oats? Do we want to... I don't think we want to sell oats, and I think we've already got... So we have got like another 9,000 in storage, and that's the prices at the moment, and in... January it does go up an awful lot so I, we, we will keep hold of these and we'll just drive back I don't think there's anything else that we want to attempt to do with them at the moment we could try and feed them to horses but I don't have any horses and I've got no intention of buying any horses either so we're just going to find the grain store that we, I think the grain store is just in part of the main yard there we've got root crop storages of various types down here and also, I think, uh, maybe silage and hay and straw and stuff like that. But I think the actual grain... Uh, that's liquid store over there. That's to do with the seed over that side. I think the grain store is this one right here. Yes. That's where the grain comes out. So we want to wiggle in through this way. And we can tip this one out right here. Fantastic. Another great big pile of oats going into our store. Well, I say another. There is, there's a, a small pile in there already, and, and we're adding in a little bit more. And then um, in the winter, we'll be able to make a fortune out of this. Well, this one decided to go and park himself right in the hedge. I am back doing some more recording. I have had a huge amount of comments from people about uh, the various different uh, random events that you'd like to see on this map. Um, I did also have a, a couple of comments about the legitimacy of this plow and um, whether or not it should be included in this series. So uh, I haven't linked any videos or anything, but I can assure you that this is a real thing. That this is genuinely a real thing, the um, front-mounted plow like this. And yes, I will concede that using it in a field like this is probably less likely. Uh, it would be done more on flat ground, but it is still a legitimate thing, the front-mounted plow. It, it is quite a, um, well, I was going to say common thing, but I mean, it, it's quite frequently done. I'm not entirely sure how common it is. Um, it's not done very much in my part of the world, but that's mostly, I think, because of the fact that we've tend to have smaller fields here so um i think i have seen it once it was a two furrow reversible bit on the front and then um there was uh, i think maybe you had six furrows on the back or something like that um you know i'm actually doing this the uh, i'm plowing the wrong way around right there that, that that is terrible i shouldn't be doing it. so we're going to turn the track around I'm just going to start from this side so that we sort of essentially finish up doing some of the longer runs on the field. Or well, we will eventually. I'm going to bring you all the way back down here. And 
Right, he, he, he doesn't like that. So we'll try going like this. And now I'll press H. Lower the back plow. And I'll let him just... I'm going to stay with him a second just while we sort of do this bit here. And he um, kind of does the, the front bit. Where I'm not quite sure how well he's going to do it. We'll, we will have to do a bit of tidy up work. Actually, I'll jump over to the combine over here. And we want to take this one up the road. And we want to put this one back up to the farm. We've got a bit of tidy up to do on two of these fields. I'm going to pretty much... Um, plant and use every crop that we can on this map. I'm sitting on 1.13 million at the moment. It was uh, pointed out that I'm busy plowing in grass up there, which we could be using for all kinds of things. We're wanting to run it organically, or I want to run it organically. That's another thing that was pointed uh, well, was it, no, it's really pointed out. There's another thing that was said. Um, I'm uh, doing this organically and a few of you would like to see me do conventional farming again because I've not done that in a while and I, I quite often do organic and some of you don't want to see that again um, you prefer conventional farming I personally don't like um, sprays and uh, artificial fertilizers and so on being put on uh, being used on fields it's it, it, it's a personal thing I, I don't particularly like it I try to buy organic food where I can afford it um, I don't like herbicides and pesticides and so on in particular I've never been fond of pesticides because uh, they, they kill bees and I've kept bees for many years and I've seen what the pesticides can do to a hive full of bees and uh, I don't like it so I've been thinking about this I personally do not like the idea of conventional farming. I prefer organic farming. And both of these are actually viable options. They, they, it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with conventional farming. I just don't like it myself. Um, there is a lot of evidence to show that not using artificial fertilizers makes land far more drought resistant than if you do use artificial fertilizers because of the way that um, the uh, it's, it's essentially the organic material in the soil and also the bacteria uh, makeup in the soil as well it's all kinds of it, it all kind of adds up together to give you an overall um uh what's the wording i'm looking for it's it essentially it makes if you don't you if you use artificial fertilizers it reduces the drought resistance of the soil because you don't have the same bacteria present in the soil it's not incorporating the organic material as much and typically if you're using an any organic fertilizers there's more organic content to it anyway and overall this does make the soil more drought resistant and these days drought resistance in soil and helping your plant survive a drought is becoming increasingly more important um but that's like the, there are all kinds of um different reasons for using organic farming and i appreciate there is also reasons against it now i'm not here to have this debate as to whether one is better than the other um from an environmental standpoint the um various sprays and so on they do damage the local environment yes they're a lot better than they used to be i'm not going to say that they're not they are hugely better than they used to be much more targeted but there are still residual impacts on the environment and it's something that i don't like so for that reason i'm going to choose not to use organic um uh, inorganic uh, like herbicides and, and sprays and stuff like that but 
there is an alternative, and this is what I was thinking about. It's like, I don't like using it personally, and this is my first realistic series. It's not like the hardcore thing. Um, so I want to do this one organic. I might do one differently in the future. We may go to a different map and um, we do that because I see no reason that I'll uh, stop doing a, a realistic play. That's not very realistic, but I'm blaming that on the hired help. And I'll tidy up the field afterwards. But we're, we're going to kind of watch this because I really like the front mounted plow and I do think it is absolutely spectacular. And I don't get to see one working very much. I've not, like, I haven't watched any videos of front mounted plow for quite a while. Um, but I do think that they look quite impressive when, when they're, they're being used. Uh, I do actually quite like seeing these things being used. But um, anyway, that bit aside. So. My compromise. I, I was thinking about this and thinking about this, and it's like, well, I, I, how can I find a balance? And I think part of the reason that some of you want to see more conventional farming is because you want to see a few things like this being used. You want to see the sprayers being brought out. You want to see the fertilizer spinners being brought out. Now, I know I'm doing that in the unrealistic series, but that's unrealistic, and it's definitely not for a lot of the people that are watching this series. So you want to see some realism. That's fair enough. I understand that. So we've got fertilizer spreaders and sprayers in here as well. There's a whole load of different machines here, different options that we can use. Um, all kinds of different methods of applying fertilizer to fields. And we've also got manure spreaders, slurry tankers, and then there's the sprayers in here. We've got all the towed ones in here, and then we have the self-propelled ones as well. What we do have on this map, and I don't know if we've got... Uh, we've got the fertilizer master right here. We need manure and we need digestate in order to be able to make solid fertilizer. And I thought that this would actually be a really good thing for us to do. Some of you did point out that I, I, I seem to be dismissing the, um, the whole digestate thing. And I would like to use some digestate and we'll put it onto the ground. But I'm actually thinking that the fertilizer master might be a good approach. If we were to take um, manure and um, digestate and turn that into solid fertilizer, that we could then use that and apply it on the field. And I think this might be a good compromise. This might be something that it um, allows me to use the machinery associated with conventional farming with the fertilizer and so on but also it allows me to stick with organic farming. And there was one thing that I wanted to look up, and that was under the construction. Um, we go into production. I uh, don't think it's under generators at all. It wouldn't be, I don't think. Um, right, I'm, I'm just going to have a quick look for it. I've got one here that I've found that is production shed. It says produce seeds, lime, manure, and solid fertilizer. But I'm pretty sure that is also herbicide right there that we can produce. So that's what I was thinking was we'd be able to produce our own herbicide here so that we can spray for weeds. Uh, the other thing that I was going to do is we've got already the fertilizer master um, there's the seed master as well, but we've also got a composter so that we can produce some actual compost. There's one there for producing uh, forage for cattle, there's one for pig food, there's one here, feed master for making um, the protein feed that we need for, I can't remember exactly what it's for, uh, sugar beet chopper. And we've got the pallet factory as well. So we've got a, a number of different um, production things that we can go and use. And what I was hoping to do is get enough that we can make the solid fertilizer. And then we'll also try and find some other ingredients so that we can make our own sort of organic version of herbicide using our own materials here. And... I am going to need to get pallets because just about everything we do requires pallets. Um, there isn't just there one for making manure, so we're going to have to get some animals in order to do that. I wasn't originally planning to start with animals, but we can move to that and, and do some animal production as well. So there's a number of different options that I'm hoping will sort of 
move a bit more towards what some of the people want with conventional farming, but allow me to stick with uh, organic farming as well. So I'm kind of, I don't try to do this too much, but I am trying to please everybody with this. Um, if it doesn't please everybody, well, so be it. This is the way that I'm going to run it, I feel. Um, so I'm going to leave that guy carrying on there. Uh, we've put the combine away. We need to do a little bit of tidy up work on this field. It's not very much tidy up work to do. And I would like to just remove the line of crop that goes all the way around the outside edge of the field. But I'm not going to worry about that today. So I'm going to flip this one over. Now something else that I did briefly mention is the uh, random events. Now, I did state that I wouldn't be doing a random event for the first season change, which is September. So I'm not going to do that. But after that, each season change, I will do a random event. I've had a lot of suggestions from different people for different random events. Some of you um, have... Uh, there's Glenn Perkins, I think... Um, Douglas Adams I think it is and there was a couple of others as well I'm really sorry that I don't remember your names off the top of my head um, I'm mentioning you specifically because there were some really good long posts I think Smog Farmer also put in a few suggestions uh, Smoodalini also put in some suggestions but there were several good long posts about um, oh uh, also um, I think it's Bembelina or Bambelina, some, uh, uh, Bembelina, I think. Um, this is a different subject, just while I think about it. I had up here a sign, and I wasn't sure what language it was. They said it's in Spanish, um, in particular Spanish from the Catalina region, um, and they have offered to translate anything that I do struggle with on the map, which is absolutely awesome of them i think it's a fantastic offer i really appreciate that that is amazing of you um the, the sign up there we did have the english version of it as well but there's a, a few different ones that maybe will come up that i don't understand um so that is absolutely awesome but loads of different random events been suggested so i've read through them all and i have looked at what i think i want to do and i've i already had a bit of a list um I've amended it slightly. So I've got 18 different random events. Nine of them are positives and nine of them are negatives. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.